Okay, so now that we've talked about the different options and the different ways that we can use grep, um, the next thing to start talking about is using regular expressions. So, regular expressions, let me bring over my uh, browser window here. Mm, there we go. Regular expressions exist in tons and tons of different languages. I would venture to say pretty much every language is going to have some sort of library or some way that they're providing regular expressions or their the ability to parse regular expressions. It's not always the same way. Um, there might be some variation between different languages, but um, chances are very high that they are there. So it's a useful tool. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it takes some getting used to. And uh, there's different things that we can do. Um, so there is a tool over here. And let me just bring up, oh, so I'll have that still open. Um, this is one tool that has been useful in the past. It's called rejects101.com. Um, and you can basically use this to test your regular expressions in real time. And sometimes this can be just a little bit easier to try and understand what's going on. Um, so please, you know, feel free to be using that. Um, I'm going to try to do most things, I think, from the command line here. So, returning back to our original version of cars here. And I'm just going to clear this side. Okay, so what are regular expressions? Well, they're very similar to how um, our file expansions or wildcars worked before. Um, it basically allows us to match many different things at a time. So instead of looking, maybe just searching for Chevy, uh, we would have a little bit more leeway in terms of what we're searching for. Um, let's start off with something very simple. Uh, I'm just going to be grepping for the letter C, and we're going to get back this, right? Um, we catch a C here, we catch some C's here, some C's there, and C's there. Okay? Fair enough. Uh, nothing is too difficult yet. The first symbol that we have with regular expressions in this environment um, is basically going to match any character. Okay? The symbol for this is a single dot. So let's take a look at what we get when we search this. So as you can see, what we got back was um, AC, RC, NC, right? Um, so this is going to be matching with N, R, A, either one of those. Um, but let's change this a little bit. Let's go and change this to a T. Now, we might be getting something here that is a little bit confusing, right? You see ST here, you see an LT, you have an AT, uh, but it also seems to be matching just the T here. And this is because when we talk about any character, we really mean any character, okay? This means that we're actually matching up with the space that's in front of the T right here and the T right there, okay? You notice we're not matching up with the first letter of the Toyota here because it's the beginning of the line. There is no character in front of it. And another way that you can look at that is um, I'm just going to take this. What I'm going to do is drag this and I'm going to pull this into Rejects 101 and you can take a look. So, sorry, let me get rid of that. So, if I enter this, you're going to see that there is a space in front of here, and this is what we're returning. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I just realized I was um, uh, doing working with two different files with different results, but this should be a little bit more clear, right? We're getting LT, ST, and the space T. Okay. So this is something that will cause, um, this is maybe something that you don't really expect as a result. Um, just do this, cat dash and cars 
again. Okay, this might be a behavior that you don't really expect. Um, it can definitely mess with you. So it's something to keep in mind. The next thing we're going to talk about is um, the asterisk symbol. Okay, so let me just bring this one up. Now this one is similar to how it works with uh, file expansions. If you remember from file expansions, what the asterisk means in that situation is that we're going to be matching zero or more characters of any type. Um, what it means in this case over here is slightly different. What it means for us is it's a quantifier and it's going to be searching it's going to be modifying how we search the character in front of it. So in this case, we're looking at the O, okay? And we are modifying how we're searching for that O. We are searching now for zero to many O's. Not any character, but O's especially. So let's take a look at what this does. So you'll notice um, some of the results that we get we have Mustang. So notice we had the T, we matched up with the T, and um, how many O's are there? Well, there's no O's. There's zero O's. But that's fine because this is modifying O. We're searching for zero to many O's. Okay? So again, this seems to cause a lot of confusion but um, you know when you when you get the idea behind it it gets a little bit easier to work with so how do we do the thing how do we recreate the behavior that maybe we expect um, with file expansions for example well the equivalent way of doing this would be um, to use a dot and an asterisk. So now we've got the dot which means any character and we're modifying that search so we're searching for zero to many characters and what this means is uh, for example if I'm going to do something like this um, let me just do 83 I can return this and we're going to get back some results so we match up with Ford and then we don't care about any of this stuff. We're just going to match with whatever um, LTD and the spaces and everything like that, just as long as it ends with the 83. Okay? So this behavior is a little bit more similar to what we've been doing in the past. Okay, so let's talk about ranges. Ranges um, are very, very similar to how they work with file expansions. Let's take a look. Um, I'm going to do grep. I'm going to do this. And um, let's start with an H. Okay. So we're getting these. Um, and let's say that we want to be um, matching one of these characters. It can be, let's say, for example, a T or a C. Okay. So this is going to match either one T or 1C. And when we do this, we're going to get back CH and TH. Okay. It works. We can also invert this. Sorry. So when we are doing file expansions, uh, it's an exclamation mark to invert this range. Um, but in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be searching for anything that is not T and not H, or I should say, or not H, okay? So the H has to be there, and we're looking for anything that is not a T or not a C. And so what we get back, again, is the capital C, right? Because grep um, is case sensitive. So. Once again, as you know, uh, let me just clear the screen here. So, as you might expect, uh, we can also do this with uh, ranges of, let's say, a number. So let's go to 0 to 9. Uh, I'm going to put this in single quotes. And you'll notice I've been doing single quotes this whole time. Um, 
The reason for this is something that we're going to talk about when we start talking about bash scripting. And the idea is that um, the quotes are important um, just to isolate things and the different types of quotes have a different behavior. But we'll cover that. Um, the only thing that you really need to know at this point is it's better to be using single quotes in this case. Okay. All right, so let's search for this. What we're going to be looking for is numbers between 0 and 9. Um, you can also do things where you're just adding a bunch of stuff like that. So this would be searching for 0, 9, a dash, or an underscore, for example. And you can also use, you know, letters like this. This will capture all letters. We'll get back a lot of stuff like that. And, of course, you know, we can always invert it. So we're getting other things like that. Um, but probably easier just to type in 0 to 9, right? And there we go. So now let's talk about something that you might find tricky. Let's say that we want to be searching for all of the um, numbers that have uh, two decimal places, right? Let's say we want to be matching up with all the... Um, these are years and this is mileage so we're going to be try to we're going to try to match up with whatever results here have you know only two digits so we do this and we get back a behavior that we probably don't actually want right we are matching up with this and we're matching up with this we're not able to parse this and say, you know, we only want a two-digit number. We're just like matching two groups of two digits in this number. So, how can we get around that? Um, well, for the moment, probably the easiest way to do that is just to add spaces in your uh, search. And when we do that, we get more of what we were expecting to see. Right now we're matching with 77, 79, basically all the numbers from this column, and we're not matching these ones. And this is actually a perfect example of why we're using quotes for things, because if we don't have these single quotes, if we take out these single quotes, for example, um, we're not going to get what we want. We're just going to have um, basically, the shell is going to interpret those spaces as um, nothing important and just ignore them. Okay, so we've talked about some special characters uh, for grouping and things like that. Um, now we get to talk about some positional characters. And what do we mean by that? Well, um, we basically have characters that will help us um, be matching the beginning of the line and the end of the line. Okay, so let's say we want to be uh, matching up with all of the companies uh, that start with uh, an F, for example. So, we'll start with our quotes here, go cars, and the character for this is the um, caret. Okay, you'll notice the caret is not in the square brackets because as soon as we do that we're changing what it means we have this outside of square brackets and so that means we are um, saying that we are only interested in the beginning of the line okay so let's try that and there you go that's a bit exactly what we're looking for we're looking for Ford Fiat and Ford those are the only two companies that we've got in this file and you know we could totally combine stuff like that so take a look at this regular expression and take a moment just to think about uh, what you think it's gonna do okay so let's have a look so we are basically saying we are interested in the results that do not start with F or T and that is returning all these other ones, P, C, V, H, whatever. And finally, I'll just clear the screen here. Uh, finally, we are looking at the end of the line. So for this, 
we are going to be using a dollar sign. In this case, the dollar sign is meaning the end of a line. So we're going to look for all the matches that end in five. And you'll see there's only one of those. Okay. Let's say we want to match all the results um, where the price of the car is between, let's say, $100 and $999, right? So we're looking for anything there where the um, last result has only three digits, not four, not five, not anything like that. So we have a positional parameter there. And we know that we're working with digits. So we'll try that. And we're looking for three. So at the moment, because I haven't taught you the alternate way of doing this, um, we might try something like this to begin with. And what we're going to get back is not quite what we want, right? Because we're matching all of the lines, basically. And what we've got to do in this case is add a space to our query. So now let's run this again. And you'll notice we're getting back the accurate results that we want. OK, so we haven't talked about this, but uh, let's say that we've got, um, I'm just going to enter uh, just a sentence of something. OK, so we've got the echo over here. Now that's interesting. So let's take this. Let's do that. Um, hopefully you talked about escaping different things. Um, the dollar sign one in this case has a special meaning. We're going to talk about that as we go. Um, but we can also do use this to demonstrate something with grep, regular expressions. Um, we can be searching for dollar sign only. And so having the slash there means that we are going to take this character literally. We're not looking for the end of the line. We are looking for the dollar sign as a literal character. So when we run this, we definitely get back. We're ab ab able to match with the dollar sign. And you'll notice if we uh, take this out, it's not matching the same. It's matching, but it's matching the end of the line. Now we can try this, for example. Now, this is actually going to be uh, matching any character again. So we're catching the period. If I take this out and change it to an exclamation mark, we're still going to match it because we're going to be matching the exclamation mark. So what do we got to do? We got to make sure that we're setting this to be literal. We're literally looking for a period. We're not trying to match any character. So when we do that, we don't get the match. We don't get the match until we change this back to a period. And there we go. So if you guys are programmers or just like, you know, have the normal healthy amount of uh, laziness that we should all have and, you know, be cultivating in our professional lives because, you know, we've got better things to do than try and uh, let me go back here. Uh, we had something like this, right? Now this is a lot of extra typing and imagine if you're trying to match up like, you know, uh, numbers with like eight, nine decimals or whatever. Uh, this is actually very, 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 very um, wasteful and uh, a waste of time. So we're looking to try and match three digits, right? What if we're looking for five, for example? Um, we could do this, uh, but probably what we want to do is be giving it a number. So now we're starting to do with groups, okay? Uh, let's do this. So the curly brackets in here mean that uh, we're going to be looking for this character right here. We're looking for one digit between 0 and 9, and we're going to repeat that three times. There's one little hiccup, but I'll show it to you. So this is not matching anything. And that's because we can't use these with normal grep. What we have to be doing is using egrep. 
So what is egrep? Well, here's the problem. Um, we have regular expressions, but we also have extended regular expressions. And so what this means is um, these are yet even more different characters and yet more ways of doing different things. Um, it's not supported by grep by default. We have to give it um, a special option, which is the dash E. Okay, um, the dash E. So essentially, when we're using E grep, what we're doing is uh, this is an alias for grep dash E. And with the dash E option, we're able to give it extended regular expressions. So this should return it. Um, extended regular expressions um, will give you a lot more options and things that you can do. Um, but uh, we're not actually going to be testing you on it for the exam or for the quizzes. We're only going to be teaching you, or we're only going to be, uh, you know, judging you on the ability to use regular expressions. Um, so this is extra learning material if you want to learn these and work with them. It's, you know, a very useful thing to know about, um, but you don't have to know it for quizzes.